So in this lesson, we are going to be uploading content into our Google Drive. I'll show you how to do that. And so what we're doing is we're going to create a folder on our Google Drive. I've just called it Uploads. And then going over to our web app, we're going to select files from our computer and then upload those files onto our Google Drive. So once you've selected the file, we can upload. And once we press the upload button, uh, that will upload whatever file we've got within the input. And so selecting upload, I'm uploading this PDF. And so now I can click the link and view the PDF. And that's also sitting within the drive. And then we can upload some images as well. So select uh, an image from my computer, click upload, and that's going to add to the list of files. So once again, can click it and open up the file. And as well, you can see the files being uploaded within the drive. So that's what we're going to be creating within the upcoming lessons. And this is sitting within the Google Apps Script web app where we're running the do get function to get the front end code which is contained within index.html. And then this is JavaScript code selecting the page elements, adding an event listener, and then using the file reader in order to manage the upload of the content. And so whenever the file is ready, then we send it over to Google Apps Script and we're sending the object data. So the meme type, the base64 data and the file name over to Google Apps Script where it creates a blob from there. And once it's within a blob format, it's really easy to use the blob data to create a file from it. In this lesson, we're going to be focusing on building up the front end code so that we can pass data back to the back end Google Apps Script code. So we're going to get rid of some of the contents that we did within the previous lesson where we were passing the data through and we don't need that actually anymore. And also get rid of the styling as we don't need that either anymore. And you can set up a title just like you would with any other client side code. So I'm calling it uploader v2 so that the title is going to match what we have within the app script name. And then we're also out outputting some JavaScript here so we can get rid of that content as well. So right now I'm just going to comment it out. Let's go back to dev. We'll do a refresh and make sure that it's working so it doesn't look like uh, it looks like we did have an issue there. And I'll just going to remove that altogether. And we'll try that one more time. And now it looks like the dev is working. So we're ready to continue to build this application. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to pass some uploaded content from the front end to the back end. And right now we're going to pass a an image object uh, and have that upload within our Google Drive. And that's going to be set up and sent over to the Google Apps Script. From here, we can create a function, do the upload, and it's going to get some data that's going to be passed in from the client side to the back end code. And what we're going to do for right now is we're going to just do a return uh, so that as we're developing it, we can pass some data over and we can work with the content and the response object on the front end side. So within the response object, we're going to create that object here within the client, within the Google Apps Script code. And for this, we'll have a value of status. So just do a Boolean value of true so that we get some type of response back. And then we'll be working through the data, passing the data. So how about we add that in as well? So we'll create a part of the object data and then whatever we've got for the data. And so this we're going to actually So I need to have a comment, comma there. And what I'll do is I'll do a JSON and it will stringify the data. And then we'll test passing the data from the HTML side over to the backend code. So now that uh, we've got the content here, let's uh, do some JavaScript coding where we're gonna select an input value and then that data we're going to pass over to the back end side. And I'm actually going to open up the editor 
and run the code within the editor because it's a little bit easier to read when we're doing the front end code as we're not ha we don't have any uh, Google Apps Script code within this code. I'll get rid of the script tags as well. And as we develop it, then we're going to copy and paste it back into the Google Apps Script editor and try it out, run it within the browser, within the de dev version. So I'm opening up the editor that I use, and that's going to be the Visual Studio code. And of course, you are welcome to use any editor that you're comfortable with, as well as the Google Apps Script editor as well and just opening up the editor here and creating a brand new file and let's save that file and this is just a file that i'm going to be running in the browser as i create the javascript and add the styling to the file so i'm just calling it uploader v2.html and i'm copying and pasting the html code and actually let me get this updated code here and what i'll do is i'll do kind of a split screen here so updating the contents of the HTML file and we can save that. And then whenever we want to run the HTML file, I can just drag it over to the browser. And that way we can see what we've got for the output of that file and minimize this. So that again, I can see the code on the left hand side and the browser window on the right hand side. So I'm going to minimize some of the screens. And this is only for recording purposes uh, so that it is easier to see the code and as well as the results from the code. So you don't have to do this, of course, as you're developing. Uh, so selecting within the browser, selecting inspect to open up the dev tools and then going over to console so that we're ready to pass over some JavaScript content. So what we want to create is an input area where we can have the user uh, have an input field and this is going to be file and the type of file it, or the type of input is going to be file as we're expecting the user to select a file to upload. Uh, let's uh, give it a class and I'll call it uploader. And this is how we're going to select it with the JavaScript. And we're going to add one more option here where we're going to add a button. And this button, I'll give it a class of BTN. And that will give me a button to select to trigger the file upload. So once we've selected it within the input, then we can push the button and do the upload. And I'll just write upload there on the file. Let's go over, refresh it. So we've got the choose file and the upload file. And right now, nothing is going to happen if you click it because we haven't attached any JavaScript to it. So next up, let's grab... Uh, the object with JavaScript. And we're going to select the contents of, we'll select the button object using the document and query selector. And this is selecting the elements on the page. So we want to select the button and we can do that by identifying the class of the button, which is BTN. And also let's select the file contents. Uh, so this is what we want to upload. This is the content that we want to upload. And I'll just call it up file. And I'm going to select the object with a class of uploader. And I'll also do a word wrap so that the editor content is easier to read. And I'll make this slightly smaller so that we have more space for the coding. Uh, so next, let's do the add event listener. So this is adding the event that we're listening for. And the event that we're listening for is a click. And then whenever it gets clicked, then we want to upload file. And I'm just going to create a function called upload file, which will allow us to run this function every time the button is clicked. So creating a function called upload file. And we're going to be selecting the file contents from the input area. So let's uh, select that there. And for this, we're going to need the reader object. So in JavaScript, you can create a new file reader object. And what that will do is that will create a file object that you can read and interact with within your JavaScript code.
There's more information about it over at the Mozilla Developer Network. So basically, a file reader is an object that lets web ap applications asynchronously read the contents of file, so raw buffers and so on. So basically, you can read the contents of the file, and then you can manage and handle the contents of the file. And there's several event handlers for this file reader object. And the one that we're going to be looking at is onload. So what happens with the file reader onload, whenever the, the, this is an event that will trigger every time the read operation has successfully completed. So once the browser has read the file contents, then it's going to trigger the onload. Uh, so this is where you can complete the uploading of the content and sending it over to the backend code. And we can also read the data as a data URL. So that will turn the file contents of the specified blob and results into a data URL. So this allows us to select the file contents and pass it over to the Google Apps Script as a blob. And then we can use that blob within the Apps Script to create files from the blob. And there's going to be data that's contained within this blob as well. So that allows us to identify what type of file content it is that we want to create. So let's uh, bring all of this together where we're triggering that event, the onload event, uh, whenever the button is clicked. So saving the file upload. And right now, of course, we don't have anything happening, uh, but that is being triggered. You can also have a console message. And I'm just gonna say something like ready right now. So whenever I click the button, just to make sure that our button trigger is working properly. So just refresh that. And now when I click the button, it's running the contents of this function. And that's exactly what we want because we wanna trigger the next event, which is the reader on load. So reader, and then whenever the file loads, we can run an anonymous function and even pick up the event object of that function. So we have to also identify what the source is of the reader object. So I'll just uh, type within here, file ready. And then just outside of it, we can use the reader object and we can read as data URL. And this data URL is going to be what the contents of the file input area is for the upload. So let's uh, select up files. And up files is going to be equal to the contents. So we're going to have an option to select multiple files. And we're selecting that from the up file object and files and if we only want the first file we can do a zero like that so we've got the data url and that's going to be reading the contents of up files object so save that and let's uh, refresh and now let's add a file that we want to upload and add so we've got a few files here within the folder uh, let's uh, select them and then going back into the editor. So now we've got a file there, and when we click the upload button, that's gonna trigger the upload file function, and it's gonna run through creating the file reader object. And the problem here is that it was expecting only one item, and because up files has more than one, so we need to set that, otherwise we want to loop through the array of possible files. Uh, so refresh, I'll try that one more time. So if you get that object and that error, that means that you're trying to upload more than one file and it's not reading it as a file object because it's an array of items. So we get the proper messages now that we've got ready and that the file is ready. So that means that this file is ready to upload and we can pass that data back to the client side using the Google Apps Script run. Uh, so this is gonna be 
Now, once we're ready with the reader file and the upload file, we can ready and we can pass the data over. And that file object is going to be sitting within result. So once we're reading the data as URL, and that example here will show us that when we're finished reading and doing a reader data as URL, and this is actually also a good point that we want to make sure that we do have a file there before we try to read it. So let's add in that condition to make sure that up files exists, that we do have something there. And then at that point, then we can use the reader to try to read some of the content. And just as an example for the Mozilla Developer Network, that now we've got the source is sitting as the reader result. And it's converting the image file into a base 64 string. So that's what we're going to output into the console. And save that. And we'll try this one more time. So do a refresh as we've updated the code. Select the file that you want to use. And then click Upload. And now we've got the base 64 of that image. And let's also try the PDF. And Upload. And so that also created the PDF there. Actually, let me get rid of, clear that and do the upload. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of data here. And this, instead of being the image, we've got the file type here as a PDF. So we can use that and pick that up from the Google Apps, Apps Script side of it as to what type of content it is. So next up is to pass the content back to the Google Apps Script. And then of course you can update the front end code as needed. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it fairly plain here and I'll upload, I'll change this H2 to upload your file to drive as the H1. We'll clean up the code a bit. And here is where we're going to be passing over the reader result. And that's going to be going over to the Google Apps Script so that we can handle that content. So we can now close our editor or move it off to the side, bring that into the Google Apps Script, save it, within the index.html file, go over to dev, and let's uh, just make sure that everything is working properly. So selecting the file that we want to open, click upload, and there's the content that we're ready to upload. So we're ready to bring that over to the backend side. So just where we've got the reader result going into the console log, let's uh, use Google script run, and with success handler. And what uh, success handler will do is that allows us to run a function uh, once we've successfully managed and returned back the content from the Google script side. So right now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a function call to this do upload function. Uh, so we're referencing it here uh, after the last dot there and do upload and then what we want to pass to the back end, and that's going to be the contents of the reader result, just as we're outputting it into the console. So we're calling over to a function called success once we've successfully uploaded the content. So let's create that as well within the within then the client side. And this is going to get a response object that's returned back from the Google Apps script. And I'm just going to be outputting that response object into the console. So I've removed the reader result there. I want to pass it over to the Google Apps Script. And then once this reader result data is passed over to the Google Apps Script, it's handled it successfully. Then on the client side, it's going to run the success function to complete the loop. So let's uh, take the upload data. And right now, we're just going to be stringifying the data and passing it back over to the client side. So do a refresh. We'll clear the terminal, select the file, and do an upload of the file. And as we can see, now the file data has made a round trip, and we're getting it returned back as data. And then this is the base64 content of that image. So that means that we can retrieve it back on the Google Apps Script side, and then we can manage that content within the Apps Script. So that's coming in under the data object. And from the data object, 
this is where we can use the base64 decode and create an image out of the contents. So let's uh, add in. And what we want to do is we want to get the substring of the base64. Uh, so this will tell us the type of upload it is. And I'll just call it data t. And it's coming in as data. And then using the JavaScript substring, which is also within Google Apps Script, we're selecting the data object again. And then we want to get the index of wherever base64 is located, base64 comma. And once we select that, we're going to add 7 to that. And we can also return that data t back into the object so that we can see it all from the browser. And save. And now let's uh, clear and do an upload. And when we do the data t, that's showing us what the contents there are of the data object. So next up, let's create a file on the drive. Um, and we're going to be creating a file from the blob object. And this, uh, we're just going to require some permissions. Uh, so the file that we want to use, and we can also specify a folder that we want to load it in. If we don't specify a folder, by default, it'll go to the root. So I am going to create a folder. And I'll just call it uploads. And then go over to the folder. And in the web URL, you've got the folder and you can get the ID of that folder. Uh, so we can use that as the folder ID. So in order to select the folder, and I'm actually going to put the ID into a string value there so that we can use that as we're getting the folder object. So this is where we need to use the drive app service. Drive app allows us to interact with the Google Drive or allows Apps Script to interact with the Google Drive. And we want to get the folder by ID. So that will get the collect object that we want to use. And this is where we want to drop the file contents in. So you can also do the drive app and just create a file. Uh, so that, once again, that will just create it on the root. So if we want to create a file, we can now use the folder object where we specified the drive. And from there, we can create a file. And the file contents are going to be just whatever we've got within the data. And if we want to get the file URL, we can now use the file object and get the URL of the file. So this is going to return back the path to the file. And I'll add that into the response object. So under file file URL, and we'll just comma separate it out within the object. So once uh, we, we run this, we need to accept permissions. So usually what I do is I'll try to run the do upload, and that will trigger the permissions screen. So that way we accept the permissions. And we know that uh, as we're debugging, we can make sure that the script is running. So what it's doing is it's allowing the Google app script to operate as my Google account. And there's the Google app script name of the file that's running. And then these are the permissions that we've provided it. So it can edit, create, delete uh, on your Google Drive. So I'm going to just simply allow it because I know this is my app that I've created. So it looks like there is an error. So let's uh, see what happened here. And the reason we threw an error is, of course, we didn't pass in any data, but we have accepted the permissions. So going back, to where we've got our content. And we don't need to refresh it because we're not changing any of the front end code. This is all back end. So I can simply click upload again and we'll see what happens. So it looks like uh, we did throw an error. So we got a little bit of troubleshooting to do. And the reason for that error is because uh, Google Apps Script doesn't know what type of data it is. Uh, so we have to separate out and specify the data type. So we can do that on the front end code where we can split the data. So once we've got the result, we can split it by the commas. And once again, once we do the result, 
we'll output some content here. And these are going to be the different values for the response object. And this is again coming from the data reader result. And then once that comes in, then we split it and we're going to split it via the comma. Uh, so let's output this into the console so that we can take a closer look and we can see what we've got. And I'm also going to comment out the Google Apps Script part of it for, for now. So let's do a refresh because we changed the client side code. Select the file, do the upload, and now because we're split, splitting the results, so the first part is going to be the meme type, which is a base64 uh, JPEG image. And then this is the actual data that we want to use. So this is the part that the Google Apps Script needs to make use of once it's converting it back into a data format. Uh, so that's actually we want to pass it over as an object instead of just the result. So let's create that object. And this is again done within the backend code. Uh, so just uh, once again, we'll remove that. And instead of passing over the reader result, we're going to pass over the object, the data object that we're just about to create here. Uh, so we want to set, if we want to set up a file name, we can pass that file name into the object. So we'll just call it test1 for now. And uh, we also want to select a meme type. And so the meme type is going to be contained within the first data object. Adding it into the object that we're sending over. And we can use a split for this and split it by the colon. So what we want to extract out is this JPEG uh, semicolon and then the base64. So image forward slash JPEG. So that's going to be the meme type there. So we're just stripping out the contents after the first colon. So returning back the result will result in that type of meme type. And then also we want to, of course, be able to pass the data object over as well. The values and that data is going to be, we'll just call it data. And this is the entire data object of the base 64. And that's going to be contained within vowels and the second item within the vowels. And we can also output object so that into the console to see what we're sending over. And uh, just do a quick refresh there. I'll clear the contents. And now let's try to send the content once again. So we're throwing an error, but this time we can see the content that we're sending over. So file name is going to be test1. Uh, there's the meme type and there's the data object. So going back into the app script, we can pick up this now and get the full data object and then we can make use of it. So we don't need the substring in order to pick up the data type. We can do that directly within the Google Apps Script where we've identified the blob. So we're using the utilities and let's uh, get the blob using the utilities method and we want to create a new blob and so first up we want to extract out the existing blob so under utilities once again and the utility that we're using is a base 64 decode so we're decoding the contents of data and data so that's coming in or we can just rename it here as object to avoid any confusion uh, so this is what we're sending over from the client side so object data and now this is going to become the blob object and now we can create a file from the blob. And then for file, we can set the name of the file. So this is also contained within the object. And coming from the client side, we do have a file name. So setting the object file name as the file of the content. Uh, so let's see what happens now when we clear that and we do an upload. And it looks like we're still throwing an error. So let's continue to debug. And for the utilities new blob, 
it's actually expecting the object type, the meme type. So we've got that contained within the object. And that's once again coming from the front end where we've already set the meme type. So let's add in the meme type. And then we can also add in the file name as well. And so let's also pass in the file name directly from the object. So you can get uh, whatever the current files are that uh, we're reading. Uh, so whatever the current up files are. Uh, that's where we can get the file name. With the reader object, just as we get the name, we can also get the type. So that just simplifies some of the code. And let's uh, try that. Selecting the file. We'll use the same file. Do the upload. And so there's our file name, our file type. So we need to pass that over to the Google App Script within the Blob Utilities and just make sure that we've got this content properly. Uh, so we are doing a decode of the data object. We have made some changes. Uh, we don't have the data T anymore. Uh, we're using the object instead of data. Uh, we don't need to set the file name because we're doing it within the utilities. Uh, so let's clean up some of this code, save it, and uh, we'll do a refresh. And try to upload one of the files once again. So open and upload. And this time it looked like it worked. So we did get the data coming back. So we've got the full data object status, and then we've got the URL of that object that we can view. So you can copy that. And as well, you can go over to your uploads folder and we can see if uh, we've got the file open there. Uh, so that can also be pasted in to the URL. And there's our image that we uploaded from the computer uh, going over to the Google Drive. Uh, let's try another item and we'll upload the PDF. So that uploaded that PDF directly from the computer over to the app script. And as well, now that uh, we've got it working, uh, so there is always some troubleshooting to do, but once you get it working, uh, then you can customize the code so we are running this success object and it's returning back the URL. So if we wanna have the URL there, we can save and uh, do a refresh there. So now it's gonna be returning back the URL of the file. And we can put a hyperlink within our browser so that we can uh, make use of that content. So let's add in a div. I'll give it a class of output and we'll select that with the JavaScript. And this is where we're gonna add all of the URLs. And then here, set up an object called output using the document and query selector. Let's select the element with a class of output And I'm going to just append to output uh, the new web URL. So this is going to be creating a link using the document create element. The element that we're creating is going to be an anchor tag. And then we're going to be appending that. So within the link, set the text content. And that will equal the rep URL or you can as well use the returned value as we're doing a response. So we can do a response on the name as well. So add that in. So under the file name, whatever the file name is that we want to, that we've just uploaded. So save that. And now we're returning back an object called file name. So the text content will be under file name. And let's uh, get rid of uh, the URL so we get the whole response back. And we can actually create a text node instead. Uh, so let's uh, do that. We'll create a simple link text. And using the document object, we're going to create a text node. And this is all just straight JavaScript. And the text content will be whatever we've got response back for the file name. And then using the JavaScript, or I can update this to be just an A for anchor tag. 
And so now let's add all of that content together where we're gonna append it to the output area. Let's just make sure that we do have the elements with a class of output. And let's uh, start appending some of that content. So for the output object, using append, we're gonna append the hyperlink. And then output, and that's actually gonna be the hyperlink. Append, and this we're gonna be appending the link text. And also let's set the hyperlink href. Uh, so we're gonna be setting that hyperlink href to go to wherever we've got the rep URL value. Save this and we'll try it out. Just do a refresh because we changed the client side code. Let's uh, select our file, upload, and wait for the response. So it gets added to the page. So there's our hyperlink added to the page. Uh, we can also refresh the uploads directory. So you can see all the new files. And now we can actually click the file and open that up. So it looked like there was some uh, issue there because we're opening up on the same page. Uh, so we need to set some attributes to the hyperlink. And the attribute that we're setting is gonna be the target attribute and we'll set that to be underscore blank. So it opens up in a new page. That's why we're throwing the error there. And this uh, usually does take a little bit of troubleshooting because it's not exactly as you would expect uh, because this is a framed object that's sitting within the Google Apps Script. This should be set attribute instead of attributes. And actually that should be set attribute. So let's try that one more time. Now that we've updated, set the attribute, do an upload, and once it finishes loading, we get the file name, we can click it, and we can open up that file on Google Drive that we've just uploaded. So now that once we've completed the updates to the app script, you can clean it up as well. And I usually like to uh, comment out the console objects and save it. Go over to the Google app script, add any commenting that you need within the Google app script and do any cleanup there as well. And now you're ready to deploy it as a new deployment. So this is a web app and I'll just call it ready. And I'm actually gonna limit the access only to myself as I don't want uh, this generally to be uh, shared URL so others can upload it into my Google account. Um, and now I've got my web app URL. So let's uh, refresh the executable version. And notice that the URL has changed. So now we can close that. And if you ever do lose what your managed deployments are, you can always see whatever deployments that you've got. And this is where you can get the new web app, the executable URL. Uh, so let's try this or select a file, do an upload of the file. And now we can see that we're selecting files off our computer and we're uploading it to our Google Drive. And then that file should be sitting within the Google Drive. And so now you're welcome to make some updates to it. Uh, you can also check the meme type. So if you want to restrict it to particular meme types, you can add in some conditions. Uh, so if you don't want, uh, if you want to only limit it to JPEGs or if you want P, uh, PDFs, you can do that as well with a simple condition where you're uploading the content within the Google Apps Script. And this is where we're, we've got the meme type within the object meme type. So you can add in a condition there for only specific meme types in order to restrict the type of content that gets uploaded. And then there's also, of course, all kinds of customizations you can do to the client side code.